Hey everyone and welcome back to AS Advice. Just a little housekeeping before I actually begin this video and that is that I want to say a very very big thank you to everyone that subscribed to my channel, that's liked my Facebook group page, has commented on my videos and even liked some of my videos. It really really meant the world to me, especially going onto my emails today and looking at looking through a handful of emails just with a couple of questions about ankylosing spondylitis and ways I can help them. You know, this is the whole point of this channel and it's just amazing that there are people out there that are willing to put their trust in me and enjoy my videos at the same time. So to begin with, I'm just going to read out the email that I received from a lovely gentleman in America. Good afternoon, AS Advice. It's very refreshing to see a positive face on ankylosing spondylitis and congratulations that you have found a balanced lifestyle for yourself. I've not been doing very well. I have seen my doctor in the past three to four months and keep getting referred to a very lazy physiotherapist. At first I received an exercise sheet of a variety of stretches that I should do every day for 30 minutes. I have not seen any change in the level of my stiffness. I have spoken to him about this a few times and I'm sick of all that you're not putting effort into it. Do you still have stiffness each morning? If you don't, can you please show me a handful of different exercises that you may, that you do, that will help me? Firstly, I just want to say a big thank you for your email. It looks like this is a great starting point because I have two to three other members asking me the exact same thing. So here I am in my tracksuit, try not to laugh too much. So, in regards to the very first part of your email, talking about how regularly I get stiffness in my back, maybe once or twice a month at most. Right in the beginning, in the early stages, a lot. I used to wake up every single day with stiffness in my back, but now it's got to a point where if I do get it, it'll be quite mild or the very rare, quite strong and severe stiffness. So there are days where I can just get out of bed, bit of a twist and get on with my day. And there is another part of my time where I can wake up with a ridiculous amount of stiffness, having to use my fist to push my back forward. And if that's not really helping, stand against the wall for about five minutes, just trying to get a bit of stiffness to calm down. But in general speaking, if your stiffness is happening every single day, then unfortunately right now, you're either at the stage where you're gonna to have to weather right through it, or maybe your exercises aren't helping. And that's the point of this video. Now, there are hundreds of different type of exercises that someone with ankylosing spondylitis like us can do. But I could, and I could be here all day doing it, but what I'm gonna do, I'm only gonna show you maybe four to five different exercises. And the way I'm gonna do that, I'm gonna stop maybe exercises for starters, exercise with people right in the middle and those that are doing really well with themselves so I've been told by GPs is to see exactly how stiff you are so the best way I've noticed how to do this is just by seeing how far you can go down to try to touch your toes so for me right now I probably can do no more than roughly this as you can see I can only go as far as to my kneecaps I really can't go any further but I've noticed that during doing the, these exercises that I prefer doing, I can pretty much go all the way down to my ankles. So, just to begin, the Romanian deadlift. Now, this is for someone, I would say, that's pretty active, that's able to go to the gym, that doesn't get too many flare-ups. So, the best way to do this is by getting a bar. Now, put enough weight on so that you are controlling the weight, but enough where it's able to drag you down. So imagine when you're trying to touch your feet, your back can only go down how far you can actually push it. But holding a weight, it helps you go down further because it's the force that's pulling you down as well. So hold the weight nice and tight and just go down as far as you can. You don't need to go down all the way to the ground and drop it but just go up and down. As you can already see, I'm going down a lot further than I, I was able to touch my toes already. The weight itself does really, really help. Now I'm not going to do this for three sets of 10. Just gonna stop right now. And just to show you already how much a difference this actually makes. So as you know, I was about up to here, but now 
The Romanian deadlift has definitely released a little stiffness in my back, but now I'm definitely be able to go further to touching my toes. As you can see, I've already gone all the way down to my shin. So the second exercise that I'm going to do is something that I learned from my physiotherapist. Now, as you said yourself, your physiotherapist didn't help you out, and I'm really sorry to hear that. And I can actually relate to you. When I went to my physiotherapist about 10 years ago, they gave me an exercise sheet as well, and to do all these different exercises. But truthfully, I wasn't able to really do much of them. And even when I could, for weeks and months, I didn't really notice a difference. I was also very, very stiff. But there was an exercise on that worksheet that I always found that really, really helped. And that was being able to stretch out your hamstrings. Now, the best way to do this is get a towel, sit on the floor, wrap the towel around your foot, uh, just like this, legs straight out. Already, you should be in a lot of pain. And if you are in a lot of pain, then it's actually quite good because it does show that you've got a lot of tightness in your hamstring and that is something that will show up with a lower stiff back. So, you hold it like this, into the air. Breathing is very, very important. Hold it for about 10 to 20 seconds. Your leg will do its utmost best to bend. Your aim is to make sure it doesn't. Pull this, pull the towel as far as you can back. Now, it's gonna hurt a lot. Breathe, hold for 10 to 20 seconds. Put it down. Swap legs. As you can see now, I've stretched a bit of my hamstrings out. I might not be able to go further than I did before when trying to touch my toes, but we'll just see. As you can see, I have managed to go down even further. Now, being able to go down further now doesn't mean that I'm going to be at that level tomorrow morning. It's not. Probably for the next half an hour, I'll be able to keep this up and then. I will go back to stiffer and stiffer again. Well, tomorrow morning, I'll probably be end up roughly to back here again. But the point is, is that you've got to keep doing it. 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 Eventually, you will release a lot of stiffness in your back. The third exercise that I've just only recently started doing and I've seen quite positive results from is rear delt flies. Now, automatically, you must be thinking, how does rear delt flies help you with the stiffness of your back? Well, it actually doesn't help too much with stiffness of your back, but it helps you to have a better posture. Now, the reason why having a better posture is important is because our, our spine will eventually try to do its very best to force ourselves like this. Where we will start walking around like this because it has totally bent. I mean, you know, they call it the baboon back, they can call it the banana spine. It's pretty much, unfortunately, what they call that type of position. Our aim that I've noticed anyway is that people with that work out and these are people in the gym that tell me when you work out and people that do neglect the back of their shoulders they end up end up like this because they've got so much muscle here in front here so they end up walking around a bit like this. Now that's kind of not too similar but similar to the way that we walk so the way they help to better their posture, which is what I'm trying to show you, is by doing the rear delt fly. So their shoulders come back a little and they're able to walk like this. Now, walking like that all the time is nothing short of great for us because that's how we need to walk to make sure we don't get that baboon back, that banana, the banana spine. So to quickly show you how to do rear delt flies, I'm sure there's loads of videos on the internet. Mine isn't going to be the best one. In fact, I'm not going to even use dumbbells for now. I'm just going to use the bars. So the best way to do is sit on a chair, up there with it forward, and just like that. Now doing this a particular exercise will definitely help improve your rear deltoids, but do remember muscle takes a long time to grow. It doesn't happen overnight. So commit to it, and I promise you, you will definitely walk away with better posture over a period of time. Now moving on to the fourth exercise that I personally do is hyperextensions. Now I won't be able to actually perform this correctly in my room today so what I'm going to do, I'm going to post a link in the description box so you can actually see someone else do it. Now before you rush out to do this, a little warning, this particular exercise I've always found has given me the most strain in my lower back and my core muscles. If I was to say he was most suitable for this particular exercise, maybe someone in the middle to around about the expert level.
Now I do hope that I've answered your question, but I do appreciate that I've actually not shown you all the exercises that I do. Just for now, I've done one for the beginners, one for the mediums, and one for the experts, because I didn't really know exactly where you were, particularly on the spectrum. So if you would like specific exercises based on where you are on the spectrum, do feel free to contact me. My email is in the description box. Comment on my videos if you'd like. Do hit the subscribe button. I do post as many videos as I can on a weekly basis. Bye.